look at all of these people. This is amazing. So many friendly faces. Um, That is me. All right. Well, thank you guys so much uh, for coming. Thank you, Jock, for the warm introduction. Yeah, you stole a little bit of my thunder. Jock and I go way back uh, to when I first moved here. I was uh, privileged enough to work with the brand team at Red Hat, which I'll talk about here in a minute. I'm always nervous to give these kinds of talks. Even at work, I'm always afraid it's just going to be me and one other person checking Instagram. So thank you guys so much for coming. Um, it's really great to see so many friendly faces here. And I'm really happy of uh, standing up in front of you guys, uh, representing a lot of the work of my team and uh, the people out in the community and across Red Hat. So, uh, which actually brings me to the topic at hand, which is community. Uh, so, all right, we'll do both. All right, so when Jonathan first asked me to talk about community, I figured that would be pretty easy, right? I worked at Red Hat for 11 years. We built this company on the very notion of community-powered uh, innovation. And but when I talked to him um, earlier ago, a couple weeks ago, we talked about who would be here today. And um, what I discovered was this, this a lot of the people in this room today are the folks who are making the world a more beautiful place, right? You're creating the campaigns, the websites, uh, the videos. Um, and you're, you're really just helping make uh, the world a more beautiful place, which I think is great. And so I thought I'd share with you some of the work um, that we've built together with our communities, both large and small, inside Red Hat and outside Red Hat here in the community, um, and um, talk about the, the results of when you bring a diverse community of people together um, to work on, on, on your stuff. And so, um, and the, the idea that when you bring a community of diverse people together, um, you can create something pretty incredible, but even better than that, you can end up with something that you never really thought you'd get to in the, in the beginning, right? Something completely new and different. Um, but before I go too far, Jonathan thought it would be interesting uh, for me to share with you a little bit of my background and how I got to Red Hat. So, this is, uh, this is my community here. Um, this represents you know, the two biggest parts of my life right now, which is my little family here over here on your left, uh, and my little Red Hat team there on the right. Um, obviously, there's way more folks at Red Hat that I work with, but that's my creative strategy and design team. Um, we couldn't do any of the work that we do without their help. Um, but 11 years ago, it was just me and that Red Hat right there, who's sitting in the front row. Thank you for coming. Not nervous, <laughs> Not nervous at all. Um, so I was working in the film and television industry, as John mentioned, and she was working in diamond jewelry, and like two very kind of niche um, you know, careers that worked really well in New York City. Um, but we, we were happy, and, but we knew deep down that we weren't going to be raising our family in New York. And so we um, started to think about what, where a new home could be for us. And that was a really hard thing to do, considering our backgrounds. Um, and so it, we looked for almost a year. I think we looked at a lot of the major cities on the West Coast, and I would travel to Wilmington because I thought, well, there's a film studio there. That could be fun. Um, but um, we knew that New York was not going to be that place that we raised our family, and um, she has family here, so we thought we'd make the trip down to Raleigh and just check it out, right? And so the, one of the first places that we uh, ate was actually at the Raleigh Times here. I remember sitting in that restaurant going, wow, this is a really cool little restaurant, a little cool downtown, you know, if they don't screw this up, this city could be really cool. <laughs> um, so a, a couple weeks later, we went back, you know, obviously to New York, um, I was looking for jobs down here, and uh, I saw a posting for a branding internship here at Red Hat. And mind you, I had had uh, several years in a career, so the idea of an internship was kind of uh, a little bit daunting. But it was branding, and they needed some video help, and I thought, well, that's something that I know well, and maybe I could work that out. So a few months later, we packed up our stuff and uh, moved down to Raleigh. I was accepted into the 2007 internship uh, program at Red Hat. That's me, <laughs> super stoked to have a job. Um, but this would be one of the very first communities um, that I would come to experience at Red Hat. And each of those people there obviously have you know, different skill sets and they're part of different departments, HR and legal. Um, but you know, Red Hat challenged us with a really unique uh, challenge there when we first started. Uh, something that was uh, Red Hat had never done before and was just going to be amazing, an intern rap video. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to play this video because it's a little long and it's really career limiting, um, but you know, I'm going to say the first uh, couple weeks at Red Hat were, were very interesting. Um, and so John talked a little bit about it, but uh, how many people are here familiar with Red Hat? Raise your hand. All right, keep your hands up. 
How many people here think we're here to talk about the amphitheater? <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you. Right. Um, we can talk about that afterwards. Um, for those who don't quite know, Red Hat, in short, is an enterprise open source software company, right? Uh, we work with some of the largest organizations in the world um, and uh, in just about every industry there is. And uh, this is how we do it. This is our development model, right? Uh, on the left here and the right, you see our products. And for every product, there's a community version attached to it that ties back into the millions of developers and contributors who are hacking away on technology uh, every day, trying to solve their own problems within their own industries, which actually gives Red Hat insight into what might be useful for our customers, which is uh, pretty unique. Um, but if this is all we did, deliver great products and services, I really don't think that I would be a Red Hat still, 11 years later. Um, so why Red Hat for me? This is the Red Hat vision statement to be the defining technology company of the 21st century, and through our actions, strengthen the social fabric by continually democratizing content and technology. That's a pretty lofty vision statement, and this was painted on the walls when I walked through the lobby back in 2007, and it still hangs in, in offices all around the globe. Um, but being new to Red Hat, you know, I wasn't really sure how to make this connection to the stuff that we were doing to this vision statement, and how was the work that I was doing as a brand intern um, <laughs> You know, helping change the world so significantly. Well, one of the first projects I worked on was start to kind of open my eyes up to this a little bit. This is One Laptop Per Child. How many people are familiar with One Laptop Per Child, right? It's a great um, initiative established with the goal of educating children uh, um, around the world. And they do this by creating technology and content for the developing world. Sounds a little familiar, right? Um, and so the software that was used for, for these laptops was open source. So Red Hat was able to contribute to these projects and, and dedicate time. Um, but I thought this was incredible, though. Well, why, why were we working on this, right? Why were we spending resources, contributing code, telling stories about something that had nothing to do with our products? Um, I grew up with two parents that own their own business, so this really didn't make sense to me. How was, again, the stuff that I was doing affecting the bottom line at Red Hat? Um, but what I would later come to understand is that this is part of Red Hat's DNA. Right? This is what makes us such a, a cool place to work. Um, Red Hat's mission statement, um, to be the catalyst uh, in communities of customers, contributors, and partners creating better technology in the open source way. And I want to focus on the word catalyst here because this is really important and it was widely debated within Red Hat. Uh, I think the first iteration of our mission statement actually included the word leader there where catalyst is. And associates were really quick to point out that communities don't have a single leader, right? By putting leader in there, it kind of implies that Red Hat's out in front, and that's not really what we were going for there, right? Um, and so uh, the best ideas you know, come from communities. They should come from anyone who's passionate enough to bring those ideas to the table. So this idea of a catalyst and bringing people together is really something that we've embraced. Um, and so if you create these spaces where people can contribute and, and you recognize their efforts, and that's a really important piece, right? You have to recognize the contributions of these communities. Something uh, incredible and actually completely unexpected can happen. So for me, this idea of being a catalyst is really something that I take to heart in my job every day at Red Hat. So what do I do at Red Hat, right? Um, you know, a lot of things have changed over the years, and thankfully people take better care of me than I take care of myself, which is great. Um, but my team and I, the creative strategy and design team, we work for the Open Studio, um, which is I'll talk more about in a bit. Um, but we function like a full service agency, right? So we have PR, we have AR, project managers, account strategists. These folks are all helping us um, not only create the work, but bring the work to the world, right? Blast it out across all of our channels that, that we all have available to us. But for us, this Open Studio community uh, includes so many others across Red Hat. It is not just our department, it is not just our team. And actually, it includes many of you in the room. As I look around, I see a lot of familiar faces of people who are helping us get the work done each and every day. Um, you know, the work that we do at Red Hat and as part of the Open Studio just would not be as good if we didn't work with you all to get that stuff done. So thank you to everyone in this room today who's, who's helping us at each and every day. Couldn't do it without you. But like I said, things have changed a lot. I've seen a lot of growth. When I started, we were about 1,500 employees. We're now over 12,000. Uh, three products to almost 30. And when I started, um, we were making about $250 million a year. We're now a $3 billion company. Um, 
selling free software, essentially, which is, which is actually quite incredible. Um, so I, find a, uh, I spend a good majority of my day providing context for the team and helping them make connections to the new people who are joining and to the folks who have been there blazing the trails for so many years. And I find myself pushing them towards these folks um, inside and outside Red Hat and building these little communities all the time. And again, communities don't have one leader, they have many leaders. So um, being a creative director at Red Hat is, is pretty interesting because my idea most of the time is probably not the best idea. And that's okay. Um, and in fact, it's pretty incredible to watch a community take an idea and a little piece of context and turn it into something beautiful. Um, and, and as we all know in this room, sometimes an idea can be really hard to give up to a community of people, right? Or the, the thing that you've been toiling with for so long, it's kind of hard to give that up to the world and have them give you feedback or change it completely. Um, and sometimes we just need people to give us a little gut check on some of the work that we're doing um, and bring new ideas to the table. And that's, that's the beauty of all of this. So as our open studio has evolved over the years, you know, we talked a lot about this idea of designing in the open source way, you know, trying to mirror a lot of what you saw in the vision and the mission statement and um, tying that back to the work we do. Because in theory, right, the development model um, that delivers great products, in theory, should also deliver great creative work as well. Um, and so these ideas of exchanging ideas early and often, not going at it alone, bringing people into your process, being receptive and not defensive, and I think we've all heard that feedback is a gift, but when it comes in in buckets, it's a little hard to uh, you know, manage that. It's really hard not to get defensive, um, but if you can be receptive to that feedback and put yourself in those other, for, uh, those other people's shoes, it really does help. And this idea of making it our work and not my work, and that's really important. And then again, opening this work up to others and letting them remix it. Like how scary is it to take the thing that you spent so much time on, give it out to somebody else and let them hack away on it, right? It's, it's, it's kind of scary. Um, but what we've seen is that it's actually uh, created better outcomes for us down the line. So I want to talk a little bit about some of the projects that we've worked on with, with many of you here in this room. So this is open source stories, and this one is near and dear to my heart because I can make a clear connection back to that one laptop or child series that I started on as an intern. Uh, you know, we're shining a light on the power of open source and the power of community outside of the enterprise IT space. Um, and I'd actually just returned from a competitor's conference. So three years ago, I'm at a competitor's conference. Uh, they had an innovation hour up there on their stage. And uh, every one of those folks was talking about their new technology that they were starting. It was very startup-centric, uh, very hip, young. And, but all of these projects had an open source component to it. And this was kind of frustrating for me because I was at a proprietary vendors conference, meaning like they don't share their code, they don't open up their work to communities. And there were these stories on that stage. And thankfully I was there with my boss and she agreed. We actually came back to Raleigh and started talking about that. Um, and with her support, we were given the opportunity to create just a couple films to see how they would do. Um, and I want to show uh, one of the first, uh, I want to show a trailer for one of the first films because I think it encapsul encapsulates uh, the spirit of the entire series. Let's see if we can get this to play here. As I like to say, we make children smile, we make parents weep, and we make nerds rejoice. And any of those is actually a real badge of honor, but to be able to do all three all at once, which is what usually happens, um, is huge. The only naval thing was a let's just see what happens, and open source turned out to be the easiest way to do that. When I first walked into this lab and saw a young man named Derek receiving an arm uh, that was made with a 3D printer, I was just blown away. I couldn't really believe it at all. So I'm looking down at this and I'm not seeing a hand and some weird plastic thing. I'm seeing two hands. He says, so I was born without self-consciousness with a, a hand like this, and my dad and I designed this thing. We use a 3D printer, and he goes, boom, boom, boom. And everyone 
leaps to their feet like it must stand in innovation. Our goal is to totally democratize the process so that any amputee can find an appropriate device and get access to the information and the design files and, and make themselves uh, an assistive mechanical device. Our mission here is to make these designs available to anyone anywhere, to provide access not to protect treasure. Uh, I can't imagine new designs being developed and delivered to the marketplace in a matter of weeks or months. Doing it in the old way. Being able to share um, and build on each other's ideas um, is, a, is a whole new world. What we're trying to do is we're trying to almost like fast pace what you would originally do with research and development. So you have one idea here. Um, and you have another idea here, and you have someone who can help you make that idea either happen or even better. One set of designs all came together with uh, a project where we built an arm for a, uh, a child in Mexico, starting from his existing prosthesis that was given to us in September. We had incorporated all of the best things that we've been designing for the past two months and got there to it just in time for, for Christmas. And that was all possible because of the technologies and the philosophies that allow good ideas to go around the world at the speed of light. access and not to protect treasure. Um, I love that statement. I think that encapsulates everything that we do at Red Hat. Um, and what I love most about this series, though, is not necessarily the stories themselves, um, but what has happened over the past three years with this series. And because we opened up this work to everybody within Red Hat and outside of Red Hat, um, and allowed others to remix that and bring new ideas to the table, what started with just a couple films has really transformed um, into something much, much bigger. Um, you know, again, as we open this up, a lot of our writers on uh, the content team saw an opportunity to extend this brand into long-form journalism, which is something they had actually never done before either. So this was new territory for them as well, uh, but also really invigorating. And they, they crafted a series of artificial intelligence articles that would complement our, our next film, The Road to AI. Um, and the, the articles really give you a more in-depth perspective of that story, something that we, you know, after we get the film to 15 minutes, it's like, all right, how much can we put in there? But it's a really nice complement to the film series as well. Um, and not only did this inspire the writers, but it inspired our graphic designers. Uh, they went off and created a lot of these amazing illustrations that you see here. Uh, we actually created a hand-lettered typeface that we're going to be open sourcing later this year. And um, the... Uh, the, when, when it came time to create the web presence for this, the web design team actually decided to do something they had never done before, which is create interactive articles. So I wish I could show you those here, but if you go to the website, there's a lot of motion, movement, and emotion into these pieces. Um, and so it's really kind of spurred a lot of inspiration internally at Red Hat. Um, last year, we even furthered the brand a little bit more. Um, in the Red Hat Summit, uh, our annual users conference started creeping up. Um, and I can tell you that putting live speakers on our stage, like the stage time is very valuable and a lot of people question whether or not this was worth putting on our stage. We have a very finite number of minutes to tell our story, so were these going to be valuable? Uh, and we put the first three speakers up there, TED Talk style, uh, gave them about 10 minutes, and people really, really love these stories. And so much so that um, we've been doing this now for three summits, and last year we were actually going to have two like, really seasoned professionals on our stage. I hope you can see it. That is Ellie. She is nine years old, and she did a live demo in front of 75,000 IT professionals. <laughs> Absolutely rocked it. I'm nervous. This girl would kill it. It was amazing. Uh, and Femi over there on the right, he's 11. He runs coding camps for kids his age and younger all around the globe. They absolutely killed it. They inspired a group of 7,500 professionals, and the place erupted. Every time these kids got done, standing ovation and, and they went nuts and I, I encourage you all kids or not go home and watch these talks 
they're inspiring, and they will make you question what you're doing with your life. <laughs> um, uh, most recently, our CoLab um, program, who some of you might have heard of, it, was combined with the Open Source Story series. Um, and the program, the CoLab program, aims to empower uh, young middle school girl, girls, yeah, young middle school girls getting exposed to technology and collaboration and the ideas of open source around things like science and technology, um, engineering and math. And our goal with combining these two stories um, is to bring these communities together, right? And I love this because it ties directly back to the, the mission statement of Red Hat to be that catalyst. We're taking two groups of people um, that would have never otherwise met and we're bringing them together. So we're, we'll, in the coming year, we'll be taking uh, participants like John Schul from Enable from our open source series uh, program and bringing them to these activations with our CoLab community. And, and again, bringing these two communities together to see what happens. Uh, and we're really excited to see how that progresses. So uh, the next project, sorry, uh, and uh, again, this was all because we opened this up, and, um, but one of the next projects I want to talk to you about was not necessarily an idea that started, it was a request that came in. We all, right, we service as a, we serve as an in-house agency, so requests come in all the time. Uh, but a request came in from our um, Red Hat Enterprise Linux business unit. Um, and this is the operating system powering about 95, 94% of the world's Fortune 500 companies. It's, it's in many of the uh, businesses that, uh, around the world. And the business unit was really looking for a new way to tell their stories. We had been spending many years talking about the new products that we were adding to the portfolio. Um, and they wanted to create a new voice for themselves. Um, and so the team got to work, um, as we always do, by reaching out to the community first and foremost to kind of understand more about what they would want to hear from us. Um, and they began this project um, with a series called Comics and Coffee. And this was actually a genius idea. They traveled to events um, and interviewed about 266 folks uh, who had experiences with the operating system before and really kind of asking them about their experiences with the OS. Uh, what were they struggling with? What were they happy about? If we were gonna create a series uh, that spoke about this, what would uh, they wanna hear about? Um, and they used all of these stories as a basis uh, to create the next project. And, and comics and coffee, they, they were able to get like, a cup of coffee. We did a little interview with them. They got a little caricature drawing of, of themselves, uh, which you know people love to get free swag at events. Um, and so this is Command Line Heroes. This is Red Hat's first ever podcast. We've never done anything like this before. And this, this podcast focuses on the history of the operating system and then some of the new emerging technologies that, we were, uh, that we've acquired over the years and how they would not be as strong as they are without Linux without the operating system, and without the developing model that emerged as a result of all of that. And since we've launched this, um, there, uh, we, we've gained over 40,000 subscribers to the podcast and over 400,000 total episode downloads. And in the first week alone, it made its way to the number one top um, in uh, the Apple podcast platform for software how-tos and number three in technology. So it, it absolutely exploded and we don't think that it would have been as successful if we wouldn't have started first by asking the community what they wanted to hear. Uh, it's pretty incredible, but as you're probably guessing, since we didn't create podcasts internally at Red Hat, this was not something we do, um, we brought even more folks to help. So this is Saranya Barak. She's our host for Command Line Heroes. She actually runs Code Newbie, which is a community, a supportive community of developers and people learning how to code. Um, and she actually has her own weekly podcast, so she has experience putting these things together, and she brought that to the table, um, and she's made the Command Line Heroes program that much more engaging, and um, if you haven't listened to these, they're amazingly well-told stories and beautifully edited, they're, they're really engaging. And uh, I'm proud to say that uh, because of the success of our first season, the team's moving into season two, and as you can see, the designers um, wanted to, were inspired by the new season and wanted to create a new look and feel for that. And if, again, if you haven't heard the podcast, I really encourage you guys to go listen to it. It's pretty unique uh, and it's really fun. And so you can start to see that everything that we're doing inside Red Hat is about giving this idea up and letting it go, right? And letting it evolve and, and uh, progress with a group of passionate people who want to bring their ideas to the table. Um, and I wanted to invite you to participate. I didn't really want this to be a one-way dialogue today. So the last two examples that I want to share with you are actually invitations for you all to participate. 
The first one was pretty small, not that significant. We're redoing our logo. Um, so after 17 years of the same logo, uh, you know, this is a huge deal, of course, rebranding this. But the brand team um, who was heading up this effort knew that we couldn't just go off and create this thing in isolation. There is no way um, that we would be able to do that on our own and have it be uh, as well received as, it, as we think it can be. Um, so the brand team developed like a radically, a radically different approach to the corporate uh, rebrand. They have embraced that idea of community from day one. Um, they recruited a cross-functional team of designers within Red Hat, and they're also partnering with Paula Share, who some of you might know as you know, logo. Like, did, was that a Woot back there? <laughs> Sweet. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so she's she's helping us think through that process. She's obviously been through that a lot with big brands, so she's bringing her knowledge, her passion, and her insights into our work uh, to make it all that much better. Um, and while we have stopped short of soliciting free designs from you all, although that hasn't stopped anybody from submitting them, um, <laughs> we, we, uh, we did incorporate several ways for you to contribute, and, and we would love for you to do that. Um, and because, if again, if we did this in isolation, if we did this uh, as a small team and unleashed it to the world, uh, Red Hatters would rise up, and so would our community members, especially these guys. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, those tattoos and company logos. It's crazy. Um, so, but we've put, already put out several invitations for you all to help, right? Um, via PR and some of the social media channels. This is the web page, um, and please participate. You can just Google Red Hat Open Brand Project. This page will pop up. Um, and again, we believe that with more eyes, uh, more participation, we'll, we'll get this right together. It'll be something the community is really excited about. The last project I want to talk about um, focuses on the future of Open Studio, and this is again really exciting for me. Um, but Open Studio again started with this simple notion of a blog and a dream, and that was really all it was. It was a couple folks in Red Hat who, uh, on the design team and creative work, they wanted to post this stuff uh, out in the world to see what people thought of it, to start getting comments, to start getting participation, asking for, for feedback. Um, I love this little quote. This, uh, Michael Team is the VP of Open Source Affairs at Red Hat, and on his email signature, it's dream so big you can share. And I just, I love that notion. I think it, it, again, embodies everything that I'm talking about here today. So for the past several years, it, it has just been a blog. It's been a blog and um, a, a Twitter handle and kind of a, a set of internal meetings where we're grabbing people and getting them together. Um, but again, uh, when asked, or wait, sorry, this is one place where I've asked you all to participate, ask questions. Um, and we've had a lot of fun building this, right? Um, we have monthly meetings internally. We go to events, um, and we've seen this grow grow from just that small community of people into, again, a fully functioning uh, internal agency without, within Red Hat, um, where many different disciplines come together uh, to get the work done. And as I mentioned, uh, we consider many of the agency and freelance partners that I see out in the world today as part of this open studio. So we want to make sure that you feel connected to that um, in some form or fashion. So what's next for open studio? Well, this is the exciting part. We're actually getting a space. Some of you may have uh, heard about this in the Triangle Business Journal earlier this month, but uh, we're expanding the open studio down on the ground floor of the, uh, at the corner of Davies and Wilmington. And uh, as you've probably seen in this space, there's gigantic windows all around. Um, and we're looking forward to showcasing our work with the community and uh, for open studio and for the Raleigh community to see. And uh, since you'll be forced to look at all this work, we're, we're asking for you guys to kind of help check the, the work that we're doing. We're actually breathing new life into the identity for Open Studio right now. This is some of the work that's, that's happening internally at Red Hat, some of the ideas that have come to life. Um, and designers, again, similar to the Open Brand Project, are coming together from all sorts of disciplines to start to think about what this new identity could look like. Um, and we're, we're going to share this work with you all on the blog and, um, and on social media. And you'll see this in the coming months. And again, we'd love to hear what you, you have to think have to say. Um, and overall, it's just a really exciting time for us and for Open Studio. We're growing fast and we're having a blast doing it. Um, for us, we imagine a world where no matter how you contribute, whatever your skill sets are, um, you're helping bring beautiful things to life. And so, again, no matter what you do and no matter um, what skill sets you bring to the table, um, reach out and share your stories and share your work. 
And uh, when we cut the ribbon on the open studio later this year, I invite you all to stop by because I think, as you've heard today, we truly believe that when you bring a bunch of people together, diverse perspectives, and you open up that work to a community of contributors and let it evolve, some incredible things can happen. Um, sometimes some things that you would have never expected to be done. So thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. We have time for a few questions. Yeah. <laughs> really. Of course, we Questions for Mike? I have no spit left. So. <laughs> yeah. I'll reiterate. I just have a crazy question. This is kind of naive about your company, but if it's free, it's how do you make money? Yes, that is a great question. If our software is free, how do we make money? Uh, so we have a subscription model for Red Hat. So our customers pay for a subscription for support, um, and they get access to, to our software. Is anybody at Red Hat helping with that question? <laughs> <laughs> What's the target the studio? That's a good question. I think we're looking at May uh, time frame. May-ish. Yeah, May-ish time frame. Yeah, but again, yeah, we're really excited. Um, right now, obviously, Buku is in that space, um, and they are moving on. But uh, there's a lot of potential, and we're, we're thinking about what kind of chairs we can have, what the going to be, <laughs> all of that. So it's, it's really cool. So, yes. So you've seen Raleigh across a lot of years now. What do you kind of see moving forward that Raleigh can really utilize, or kind of that catalyst that it needs moving forward? This right here, I think we're doing it. Honestly, I mean, I, I served on the AIGA board with um, Jonathan several years ago when he was the president. Um, I was served on the board for VAE. Like we, we have one of the most um, passionate communities of creatives that I've ever seen. Even living in New York and Boston and all these other places, when I moved to Raleigh, what I really found was that you can make a difference here. Right, the things that you were doing as an individual could really spread throughout the rest of the community. And so getting involved with things like uh, Creative Mornings um, and AIGA and DAE and all the things that we have, there's so many opportunities to connect with creative people here in this, this town. I think we're doing it. I really do see that we have grown this community of people um, in, in the right way. And we're being invited, uh, we're inviting everybody into our process. And um, you know, working at Red Hat, I totally drank the Kool-Aid, right? Community power and innovation and, and sharing and collaboration. Some of those same principles um, also apply to what you guys all know as design thinking, right? It's a, a similar process. There's, there's a unique tie between um, how we work in the creative field with uh, how Red Hat develops its products. And I honestly believe that this is the way the world is, is heading. We see this, we're all interconnected, we're all on social media. Um, so this notion that you're gonna be able to kind of patent your idea and hold on to it and that's going to be successful in five years, it's just not a thing. There's there's no way that's going to be possible. So um, you'll see this more and more, I think, in the work that you're doing. Yeah? Yes, so do you have any ideas to bridge the years of career and the Yes. Uh, when I first walked, through, uh, walked into Red Hat's doors, I was given a pencil and it said, you are a designer. I was like, oh, that's great. I'm not really a designer, but that makes me feel special, right? And then I walked through down the hallways, and these pencils are everywhere, right? And the, the sentiment was that you are a designer, right? And that, um, you are going to bring your creative ideas to the table. And when we go to our meetings with account managers, project managers, or folks from the business units that come to the request, that's the sentiment, right? We, we try to leave all those titles and all that nonsense at the door and try to open up the dialogue. Um, sometimes that's difficult for people, but I think what happens is when you get to the end of those projects, light bulbs go off and they understand, oh, it really did help shape this idea. And that, that to me, I think, get, pulling them in, getting them involved in the project, showing them, showing them that their ideas are just as good and as valid as yours uh, is a really important part of the process. Yeah, um, I think so. Uh, that is something that I think uh, I'll take a, an employment branding kind of spin on, right? Because we have grown Red Hat exponentially over the, the past 11 years. We're hiring roughly around 1,000 people a year if you look at the numbers. It's insane. 
And so our culture internally is something that we really care deeply about. And we feel like if we let that go, if we hire these thousand people and we don't talk to them about what this means, we're going to lose what, what it means to be a Red Hatter and what it means to do our work. So there's a lot of things that we do internally. I think there's a stack of books like this that talk about our culture, our brand, and all the things that we do. We have an internal program that you can actually check out some segments on YouTube called The Show. The show is now in its 57th episode. I worked on episodes 12 to 25. It's an internal communications vehicle, but um, we tried to make that fun and not have it be, I'm the CEO and I'm gonna tell you what we're doing today. It's more showcasing the people uh, around Red Hat. And sometimes we talk about this, like the, the fact that they're a musician or an artist and we focus on that because you know, we want this culture of um, collaboration and community to really come through. So Red Hat, puts that in the foreground. You see it in our vision, you see it in our mission, and we talk about it at virtually every meeting that we go to. So that's, that's kind of how we've done it. Yes? So you're moving your studio into a ground floor storefront. That's obviously very different than your typical office environment and yeah. strategically on your part. So what are you planning on doing with that? Yeah, actually, great question. So what are we planning on doing with the Buku space? So some of that's TBD, but in general, like we're just really excited to get into that space, kind of redesign it. I think from uh, some of the ideas that we've had are building, um, you know, displays along the windows and doing like different window installments. Like we were talking about like every month we could do like an anthropology window and that'd be really cool. Um, so, you know, we want to display our work social media feeds. I, I'm not quite sure what we're going to get to in terms of like literally opening the doors up to the public because it is a working space, but my hope is that we do have moments where these open studio meetings that have been internal start to become external and you guys are welcome into that space to come share your ideas and work with us. Um, but it's really just getting started. The identity work, the space build out, all of that is just starting. And so, Again, we'll start sharing that work, and we'd love to hear from you guys what you'd like to see in those windows again, right? I mean, you're going to have to walk through and buy them every day. I want to make sure they're installed. Awesome. Thank you, guys.